I got this empty single-use party balloon gas canister and I decided to see what I could make out of it. The notion is I'll cut this in half and make it into a little charcoal hearth or barbecue. So as I get on with the cutting, I think I need to say a word or two about safety. I'm cutting a gas bottle in half with an angle grinder. It's worth just stopping to think for a moment about what that means. A metal canister for compressed gas, and I'm going to cut it in half in a way that makes a lot of sparks. The two most obvious safety factors are, firstly, that this canister is exhausted. There is no compressed gas remaining inside. I know this because I was at the party where 40 or so balloons were inflated using the contents of this cylinder until it gave out. So I know that it's not, for example, full but with a faulty valve that might make it seem empty. I'm cutting into a thing where the pressure on the inside is the same as on the outside. Don't cut into a container that is under pressure. Nextly, it's also really important that the gas that was in this canister was helium, which is an inert gas, that is non-flammable. I would simply never attempt this with an empty propane or butane tank, because that last bit of gas, that is the bit that's at ambient pressure, probably never comes out of the valve, so cutting a flammable gas tank, even an empty one, could still cause a fire or explosion. Best not do that. Furthermore, there are many other safety factors to think about, such as safety gear, in particular hearing protection for this job, as well as proper use of the tools at hand, steadying or fixing the workpiece, ensuring that the sparks don't ignite the dry grass of the lawn or strike my bare skin or the camera, lots of other things which I won't cover in great detail. If you think I did something unsafe, that's good. I mean it because it means you're thinking about safety, which is exactly what you should do. Don't just copy some idiot on YouTube. You should think for yourself about safety. Anyway, this tank has a welded seam around the middle, and I'm cutting just above that because I think the weld line is probably thicker and stronger than the rest of the tank, so it will make a good rim. After cutting and trimming, I filed off the burrs, and I was pleased to see that the weld line does indeed give a nice sort of rolled rim effect. The canister bottom already has four little bumps that normally serve as feet, but I want this thing to stand on legs so the hot part is not in contact with the ground or surface it stands on. So I just drilled three holes in the bottom after first punching a starting point and adding a little bit of oil to help the drill do its job. These step drill bits are pretty good for making large holes in thin material, as they don't tend to grab or jam as easily as regular spiral fluted drill bits. I had these long bolts left over from some other project and they're perfect, so I passed them through the holes after first adding a nut and washer, then on the inside another washer and two nuts. The second nut is tightened against the first one to lock it in place. Can't use nylocks here as this is going to get very hot. Finally, I drilled a vent hole near the base to allow a little bit of oxygen in for the fire. Might not be enough, but I decided to start with this and drill more holes later if I think it needs them. Easier to start with one hole and make more than it is to start with several holes and make fewer. And that's that bit more or less done. I was expecting that when I fired it up the first time, some of the paint would burn off and probably some oils, and maybe a bit of the zinc coating on the nuts and bolts will boil off too. So I did this at the fire pit at Steve and Julia's orchard. It was pretty easy to light the fire using the oily shop towels from the construction process, plus some bits and pieces of kindling and firewood. After it had burned for half an hour, the paint started to blister. The volatiles and resins in the paint will burn off and hopefully combust mostly just to CO2, leaving a layer of adhered ash, which is just the mineral pigment body of the paint. I removed this with a rotary abrasive brush and flap wheel disc. Breathing protection is pretty essential for this job. I decided on a couple more vent holes, so three in total, one near each leg and then a little wipe over the bare metal with some vegetable oil to inhibit rust and I cook that on with a blowtorch. Now to use it in earnest. I've had this wok for a while and I've never really felt it gets hot enough, even over the biggest gas burner of my cooker. So let's see how it does over hot charcoal in this thing. Well, I lit a charcoal fire in this little hearth, which I placed on top of this big empty pot for convenience. The fire got good and hot, but performance of wok cooking on this thing was not so great. And I think that's all about airflow. The wok almost completely seals the top opening of the hearth and of course stifles combustion. I thought it would be possible to ramp up the heat sufficiently that it would stay hot for long enough to quickly fry something, but the damping effect is pretty immediate. Cutting crenellations in the top rim would probably make this work, especially if coupled with some additional vents at the bottom, but I don't want to do that here as I have other plans for this thing that would be spoiled by those modifications. I suppose I just won't use this for cooking with a wok. I did manage to get the meal cooked by blowing air through the bottom, Afterwards I threw on a load of small twigs and pieces of oak branch from my garden and I left this to burn down. After an hour or so there was a lovely bed of embers that was just perfect to sit out by as the sun went down and toast some marshmallows. 
I'll probably make a griddle of some kind to fit on the top of this so that I can cook on it that way. And I still have the top half of the gas cylinder, so I might use that to turn this into a tiny kettle barbecue or a hot smoker. One last thing, the following morning, the embers were still hot in this little hearth, so this would be actually quite a good thing to take camping because it contains the fire and it also would keep the fire alive overnight, so rekindling in the morning would be very easy. And I do want to try cooking on this hearth by nestling a pot directly into the coals sometime. But that's going to be something for a future video. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.